Hi, Peter. Uh, thanks for being with us. I need to ask where you see these protests and this larger movement actually going. I mean, you and I will both remember the Rodney King riots as well as this polarized reaction we saw to the O.J. Simpson verdict that preceded those riots. I mean, almost 30 years later, we're seeing all the same systems in place to really repeat this all again. Yeah, it's quite uh, unfortunate the same systems are in place and also the same economic conditions and uh, race conditions are in place to a large extent. And there's a real big, big, big major underlying problem with the inequities between the African-American and white communities in terms of home wealth ownership, for example. A white family median income is likely to have $170,000 each. A black family is $17,000, one-tenth. If you look at the likelihood of an African-American being a, a subject to a fatal killing uh, through, during law enforcement action of being killed, it's 2.8 times as, as more often than for the white community. For the black community, 2.8 times more often that they are killed than a white person. So this is a huge disparity, and it, where this movement's going to go depends on how the, the verdict is actually finally decided upon. Right now, it's only charges of second-degree murder, and all four of them were charged with, well, that were being involved, including abetting and aiding the murder for the three police officers and the one that was charged with murder itself. That was a good beginning, but let's see how the verdict will come down when it comes down to trial. That's what it'll all depend on. And this movement's not going anywhere. I'm sure it's going to continue until the verdict comes down and then further than that to, to reduce inequality. Right. And I mean, the verdict is really just uh, the short term, let's put it that way. In the longer term, what kind of institutional change uh, would we need to see to really address these problems. I mean, we saw a massive move toward affirmative action programs uh, back in the 90s, only to see some of them actually overturned by the Supreme Court, especially in the realm of education. Now, those were really aimed at addressing the massive inequalities, especially in education for African Americans and other minorities in the United States. Uh, if those are being fought at the level of the Supreme Court, what hope is there that large-scale institutional change can come into play to change this landscape? Well, it actually has to, because if it doesn't, then the country is going to really suffer. And frankly, if you look at the coalitions right now that are building for this social movement and for social justice change and racial justice, it's made up of huge and different amounts of ethnic groups. It's not just African Americans on the street. There are also white Americans, Asian Americans, Native Americans, Latinos. They're all out there together as a group, all different age groups. So this is a widespread, much more widespread-based phenomenon than, say, back in the 1990s. And the Supreme Court might have actually woken up to what needs to be done and will not block any real institutional or systemic changes. I mean, systemic changes as far as racism goes and also systemic changes as far as economic disparities go. And that would include some form of getting people uh, the opportunities again to get educated and, more importantly, to get some wealth in their hands. I mean, this was denied them in the GI Bill after World War II. Uh, black veterans didn't have a chance to even buy the homes they were supposed to be able to buy with the GI Bill. The white veterans could. So there was a whole bunch of ec economic wealth that was lost back then. Those, I think that the Congress is much more aware now, and it may take a change in the fall, in November, as to who's elected to really push these changes through to save this country at this point. We're in a crisis right now. We are in a crisis, Peter, and it's also frightening to think of the economic challenges that are going to be facing the nation now because of the pandemic, while all these uh, injustices and inequalities are also immediately needing to be addressed. Okay, Peter, unfortunately, we're going to have to leave it there. Thank you so much for joining us. We appreciate it.